Good afternoon. Here's what we have in the news today. 14-year-old man charged with rape of 14-year-old girl. PNP councillor candidate of Moko says JLP did not expel him. Second person charged in killing of Westmoreland, 19-year-old. Man suspected of fatally shooting another over apples surrenders. Two men shot and killed another injured in Clarendon. And ganja valued about 12 million seized in St. Elizabeth. Details coming up right after the break. Fort one year old Tyrone Cooper, otherwise called Bigger, of Codras Hill, Point Hill in St. Catherine, was arrested and charged for allegedly raping a 14 year old girl. He is charged with two counts of rape, two counts of sexual touching of a child, and grievous sexual assault. The police say Cooper raped the minor in two separate occasions in 2022. The matter was reported to the police, and on Thursday, Cooper was in the Kitson town area where he was accosted and placed in custody and subsequently charged. He is to appear before the St. Catherine Parish Court on February 16. Councillor candidate for the Mocha Division, Romain Morris, is challenging a claim by the Jamaica Labour Party that he was expelled from the organization. Morrison was elected on a JLP ticket to present Mako Division in 2016. However, on Thursday, he was nominated as a People's National Party candidate in the February 26 local government polls. A day later, the JLP named him among a list of persons who have been expelled as a result of their decision to run against JLP candidates in several divisions. On Saturday, Morris denied that claim, noting that he had signaled his resignation from the JLP in a letter dated January 10, 2023, and that his decision was announced when he crossed the floor of the Clarendon Municipal Corporation on January 11. I resigned from the chairmanship of the Moka Division and the JLP about a month ago and as such did not nominate while a sitting member of JLP. My resignation was with immediate effect, so I was surprised to learn that I was expelled from an organization that I have held no membership in more than a month, he said. He said the release from the JLP was inaccurate and a political ploy seeking to cause confusion and smear his character. I am and will remain the PNP's candidate for the Moko division and urge my supporters to ignore false statements aimed at confusing the electorate, he stated. Are you tired of browsing all over the latest happenings in Jamaica? Discover it right here on Jamaica News Online TV YouTube channel. Foreigner home and you want to be in touch with the happenings in Jamaica? Guess what? You are in the right place. We bring you reactions to the latest news at 6 a.m., 12 noon, and straight up news at 6 p.m. Ask and you shall receive, guys. So if you are watching this video, like, subscribe, comment, or share. Hit that subscribe button and remember to comment below with your thoughts. Guys, make sure you come back again and again to watch our videos. Remember, 6 a.m., 12 p.m., and 6 p.m. We are always here to give you... Detectives assigned to the Westmoreland Police Division have arrested and charged a second man with the murder of 19-year-old Enrico Chambers, otherwise called Rico, who was killed in Johnson Bush in the parish on January 18. He is 30-year-old Giovanni Bacchus of Johnson Bush, Top Road, Little London, in Westmoreland. His co-accused, 18-year-old Wade Dennis, was charged on January 29. The police say about 9 a.m. on January 18, all three men had a verbal dispute when Dennis and Bacchus threatened Chambers before leaving. The police say they returned shortly after, armed with machetes. They allegedly chased Chambers and chopped him multiple times. 
He was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. The police later apprehended Dennis at premises at Top Road, Little London. On January 29, Bacchus turned himself into the police and was charged on Friday. A suspect who was being sought by the police for the shooting of death of a man in St. Mary on Thursday morning is now in custody. Investigators said that the man surrendered on Thursday evening and that a house belonging to him was also searched, resulting in the recovery of an illegal firearm and approximately 30 rounds of ammunition. The suspect is to be questioned about the shooting death of Ryan Prendergast of Belfield, Penn, Prendergast was killed after he and another man reportedly picked apples from a property in the community. As they were leaving, they were allegedly confronted by a man who claimed that he had leased the land and, the que and questioned them about the apples. The police said that the suspect reportedly pulled a firearm from his waistband and opened fire in the direction of the men hitting Prendergast in the upper body. Prendergast was pronounced dead at the scene, however, the other man managed to escape. Two men were killed while another was injured in a shooting in Trout Hall District, Frankfield and Clarendon on Friday. The deceased have been identified as 53-year-old Michael Richards, also known as Mackey, a mechanic of Trout Hall District, and 38-year-old William Sharp, a construction worker, also of a Trout Hall address. The news understand that Richards had narrowly escaped dead two weeks ago when gunmen reportedly shot at him in the area. Richards had allegedly identified and named two men as his attackers. The police have confirmed that the matter is before the court. On Friday, the victims were reportedly at an auto repair shop when two white cars drove up and men alighted and opened gunfire, hitting the three men multiple times. Richards died on the spot, while Sharp, a 70-year-old man, were taken to hospital where Sharp was pronounced dead and the elderly man admitted for treatment. Head of the Clarendon Police Superintendent Carlos Russell said the police will leave no stones unturned in bringing the perpetrators to justice. Russell cited as unfortunate the tragic incident in what he described as a quiet and peaceful farming community. We have not been having many incidents of crime in this area, so this would be very surprising to the citizens here. A lot of them are in shock, said Russell. The police are imploring anyone with information that could assist with the investigation to call the Frankfield Police at 876-904-4507 or the police emergency number at 119. The Area 3 Narcotics Division seized over 1,200 pounds of ganja valued at approximately $12 million during an operation in Little Park District, St. Elizabeth, on Saturday. The police say between 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. they carried out an operation in the area and upon their approach, four men ran from a site and escaped in bushes. They say the ganja was seized and destroyed. No arrest was made in relation to the seizure. Guys, thank you for watching. 
Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment down below.